Welcome back to the channels Tapa Alho Azul and Super Academico. Let us keep the reading of my book Phenomena. Today we will read the chapter 11. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. Chapter 11. Going back home was interesting. I had the opportunity to watch the different personality types that my family and friends were made up of, how they handled the happiness of seeing each other again. Mom hugged me as soon as I came through the arrivals gate. Her gladness was written all over her face. Dad was the total opposite though. He looked as serious as he was the day I first left. And gave me a kiss. She was smiling a lot. I didn't see Wayne. My sister's pseudo-calmness seemed to have something to do with that to be successful lawyer. I found out what happened later on. Eddie and Rana hugged me at the same time. I felt a lot of joy in my heart. It was similar to what I felt when I was amongst the spirits. It was very physical and extremely hard to explain. I think our trying to be politically correct all the time blows us away from our true natural human feelings. During the phenomena, the plenitude of our sentiments was always strong. I think that's why the voices at Ols Park were so sad. Sadness was also expressed in its plenitude. As I was leaving the airport with them, I remembered what I had thought about at my departure. I'd wondered if the spirits wouldn't show up to share that happy moment where we'd see each other again. I guess not. Maybe due to the fact that something like that happens so often, that feeling becomes so fugacious for beings that are so sensitive, like the spirits. On the way home I tried not to talk much. I was too busy thinking. However, questions were unavoidable, and I didn't want to alienate anybody with my quietness. Joseph. Did any European insult America while you were there? Dad. The Europeans are educated people. Why would they insult us? And was right, but Dad noticed I avoided the question. He'd always been an expert in other cultures, in spite of only having been to Canada all throughout his lifetime. And he, like me, knew that different cultures always have differences that sometimes become critical, not necessarily to the point of insulting one another, but due to mere ignorance, like many Americans are regarding other countries in the world, including myself. I remembered Antonio. He was incredibly intelligent and knowledgeable. He could speak English, French, and German, besides Portuguese, his own language. I had learned in school that the coffee we consumed came from Brazil and that the Amazon, the largest rainforest in the world, was mainly located within its boundaries. I wonder what sort of image and had of Europe in order to say that. Europe is wonderful, Dad didn't make any more comments. I think he wanted and to do her own learning like I did mine, and he knew that. Dash. And they also have pretty things in their stores, what do you bring me from my list? I was apprehensive regarding the way she'd react, but... Well, nothing. Nothing? I think she didn't believe me at first. Oh, you asked me to get you way too many things, and I couldn't afford all the taxes. You're joking, aren't you? I couldn't help not laughing. Well, she saw red. If this had happened some time ago, she'd start an argument right there in the car. Yet, that didn't go with her serious will-be-getting-married-soon woman's image. However, she had to vent somehow. So she said, You stupid ass, mom interfered. And your brother could not bring so many things from Europe. Besides, you will be going there on your honeymoon anyways. So you can buy everything you want then, to which she replied a little frustrated. That's okay, for the next couple of days, she'd frown every time she'd run into me, but I just knew that wouldn't last long. We finally got home. I was tired, but before I took a bath and got some sleep, I gave mom the present I got for her. It was a jewel bow with a picture of Frankfurt on its top. It wasn't anything fancy. But it wouldn't make a difference to her whether I gave her a pen or a limo. My mother was always very emotionally attached to her children. It was easy for her to be happy when we were happy and sad when we were sad. I knew she still thought a lot about Donnie and how much she missed him. That's why I just wanted to keep her happy. It was hard to know how dad felt, but he seemed to have like the souvenir I got him and seemed touched, but I think she couldn't manage to forget the fact that I didn't get her anything. I took a bath and crawled onto my bed. It was only 6 p.m., but I was already feeling dead tired. I was supposed to go out with Eddie and Ranha the day after and needed some rest. I never got enough sleep during my stay in Germany. Besides the extreme cold weather, after Antonio's presentation, my mind wouldn't stop working and generating new doubts and ideas. Now that I was back home, I'd still think a lot about what I had already learned about paranormal phenomena. I already had lots of pages worth of notes, which I intended to turn into my very first book someday. 
I just needed to organize everything. I fell asleep as I started lying down. Yet, my thoughts were crossing over my memories. All the brainstorming would keep my mind too alert to fully fall asleep. It's been a long time since I have difficulty falling asleep. It might be my dealing with spirits and paranormal phenomena that's made my mind get too focused to the point that I'd develop insomnia. Yet, I'd worry about my personal future. Would I turn into someone as lucid as Antonio by the time I got to be his age? That'd be nice. I'd walked around the campus. It was totally empty. It was daytime but it was an extremely bright day. There was so much brightness that I myself felt enlightened. I walked onto the central cafeteria. I must have been hungry. Then I put some food on my tray and headed to a table. Yet, when I sat at the table, I realized the tray was empty. Suddenly I started to hear voices engaging in conversations as if the cafeteria was packed. So I turned around to who was there, but I saw nobody. When I looked back to where I was, the voices seemed to have stopped. I was no longer at the cafeteria, I was at Ols Park. I looked around, but there was no one there. Then I heard a voice say, Joseph. I could soberly affirm that was Rana's voice. I looked around in hopes to see her, but remained alone. Then I looked ahead of me and there it was, Donnie's grave. There was a man leaning on it as if he was resting. I took two steps forward and there he was yours truly. I mean Donnie himself. And that got me real confused. Then he looked at me and said, Are you going all the way with this, Joe? And as he asked that, thousands of voices began to scream. They were the anguished screams from Ols Park, only stronger this time around. I couldn't stand it. I started screaming for help. And then I started hearing Ranha's voice again, Joseph. 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 It was Daddy. I'd had a nightmare. It was scared. I didn't know what time it was. I had even forgotten where I was. When I finally recognized my dad, I hugged him tight. At that point, I didn't how he'd react to that, I just wanted to get away from the echo of those voices. I am not sure whether there was really a dream or just another phenomenon. Besides, up to this day and age, we still don't know exactly what dreams are all about. Yet, after that happened, I started to take my power more seriously. During the following days, I focused on getting my act together. I didn't even think about my studies or anything. For the first time, I got a little scared. As for my dad, he didn't react so badly to my hug. I think he needed that to make up for his sobriety, at least once every twenty years or so. They are nine of the malice, son. He she wants to say, Joseph. It's friend Eddie called and he she asked for you to call when he she woke up. Dad dried the perspiration in my forehead and he gave a light smile. A little timid, he said. What nightmare, right? He got up and told me that mom had left my breakfast on the kitchen table and that she'd gone out with Anne. He also told me it was Saturday. Then he went back into the living room. I couldn't say a thing. I was still impressed with the nightmare and my father's attitude. You son, thank God the voices were gone. Then I got up. It was a little tired. I'd slept for fifteen straight hours. My body was probably tired from all that resting. Besides, it seemed as if such horrible nightmare had affected me both physically as well as mentally. Next, I washed myself and, then, had breakfast. I took a look at Dad in the living room, he was working. I got tempted to look through my notes, but I decided to leave that for some other day. My book could wait at that point. The images of the nightmare were still very vivid in my head. Donnie's question, are you going all the way with that, Joe? Rana's voice. That had been the best part, and mainly the voices at Ols Park. What was all that? I called Eddie and we decided to have lunch together and spent all afternoon with one another. The three of us, he, Ranha, and I gosh, I did need that friends. In the afternoon? So Joe? How are the Germans? By asking me that question, and although Eddie wasn't very focused, he ended up reminding me of small details of my trip that challenged the human ability to live in society. We are social animals as many other animals. Yet, we are the only political ones and also the only ones who kill each other, even though we are rational. If a shark gets hurt in the midst of a shoal, the other sharks devour it. That seems cruel, but I think that's more merciful than killing a fellow human being over money or for an insignificant territorial conquest, as it is the case in most wars. After all, everybody will die one day and the earth will remain for millions of years. We do not own the earth, instead it owns us. Well Eddie? 
The people there are very nice, especially when you look at each one of them individually. I remember the professor's attitude very well. They all spoke English, but only a Swiss professor conducted her classes in English. The other ones would teach in German even if their classes were filled with foreigners. I didn't quite understand that behavior very well. I think it is cultural. Even those two professors who were here before. They spoke various languages. However, in spite of all their lack of consistency, they'd always speak in German, as they did here. That's right. When I lived in New York I noticed that many immigrants, although they could speak English, preferred to use their own language. I always thought they were snobs, but now that Joseph mentioned that, I am beginning to finally understand it. It was cultural. Just like us. So powerful and getting bit up by a tiny little ridiculous country catching in the other end of the world. Eddie always managed to bring humor into serious conversations. I don't think they are so ridiculous, the situation was difficult. Like it had happened before, Americans and Vietnamese were killing one another. We considered the European snobs. And we were considered snobs by everybody else. I remembered the pain of the soldiers at Olds Park. I wondered if all their sadness wasn't due to their guilt. I've always thought they heroes who died alone and, consequently, sad. Yet, when I came to think of that, I began to doubt that even more than I did before. Eddie and Ranha couldn't stand the discomfort of my being so serious, even if only with myself. Ranha held my hand, and I felt her heat while Eddie tried to keep us cheerful, but all that, last night's nightmare. Little by little, I started to relax some more. We spent the rest of the afternoon having fun. We went to the movies and to some amusement parks, and, despite not having a date, I didn't feel embarrassed for being with them at all. I think I'll always love them both. But the question Donnie asked me in the nightmare started to make sense. Would I be able to put up with the pressure of much information and thinking? Perhaps the clairvoyance of seeing a life after death put my very ability to look at life to the test. For the first and only time I feared my power. I just needed some peace of mind. I needed to see life through the eyes of a kid, at least until I got my act together again, little by little. I hope you have enjoyed this reading. Don't forget to subscribe to both channels and like and share the video. Bye.